Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. You join me in a quite a cold, uh, almost winter's day here in New York, which, uh, as you guys know, I absolutely love. I love getting the, the, the cashmere and the wool and the, uh, the, the winter clothes out. Uh, there's nothing I like more than that. Anyway, um, you'll probably notice there's something new on my wrist, and yes, it has arrived. I'll do a quick wristwatch check. This, of course, is the SKX009. This is the K version, so uh, this is not the Japanese-made version. However, I have ordered the Japanese version as well. I'll get into the reason why I've ordered both versions in just a moment. It's really nice to have this piece back. I, I have missed it and... Ah, uh, God, I, I... It's a cracking piece, guys, I've got to tell you. Anyway, I'll, I'll get into it in just a moment. Wristwatch check done. Let's get on with the show. Okay, welcome back guys. Now, quite a few points to get through today. Uh, I've just It's just a bit of a tying up of loose ends to be honest. So, got back the SKX today. This is the uh, SKX 009K version. So this is made in Malaysia. Now, I've ordered the, the J version as well. I couldn't get a straight answer out of Seiko. I, I wrote to them. I did a ton of research. I wanted to know what exactly was the difference because as you guys know I'm planning on modding these out and doing my own kind of doing my own special edition uh, for kind of key key supporters of the show, anybody that's interested in in, um, in investing. I'll do a more concise specialized video just on the SKX very very soon. I ha I'm waiting back to hear from a couple of um, uh, companies that, that I'm hopefully going to collaborate with. I'm not going to say too much, but uh, basically every single part that I'm going to change for my special edition is with a different company. So Because there's not one company that does absolutely everything. So And also I don't want to give away some of the really cool things that I'm, that I'm having done for the special edition. The first thing that's the most important thing is the actual watch itself and I want to be clear on, I, I can't get a definitive answer, some people say the Malaysian made version is exactly the same, other people say the Japanese version is better, uh, some say there's, there's um, discrepancies even in the Japanese, there's a lot of kind of conflicting opinions, so the urban gentry way would be to have a jewel to get them both in and see for myself. So the first to arrive is the K version which is obviously obviously more available and I must admit this one is absolutely flawless. I got this one at Long Island Watches. They've, Mark has uh, agreed very graciously, a big thank you to Mark at Long Island Watches, to uh, lend a few of these for, for the project. So, um, so that's absolutely fantastic and I'm wearing it in a kind of homage to Robert Redford in uh, All Is Lost, the film All Is Lost, he wore his SKX009 with a blue, dark navy blue NATO strap. So this is a NATO strap from uh, Wrist Candy Watch Club. Big shout out to them. My recommended choice for uh, for NATO straps. So in a kind of homage to uh, Robert Redford, I've I've gone with the the navy absolutely loving it. I've, it's it's so nice to have this back. I must admit, you know, setting the time and and just the feel of the movement and the fit of it, the bezel, everything, it's like having an old friend back, you know, it's like, I can't really, it's, it's just absolutely fantastic. It really is like seeing an old friend and I gotta say, everything that I've said about this watch, I I, I stick to 100%. It is really, it is the best dive watch, without a doubt, 
for under 200 bucks. There's nothing... I think everyone should have an SKX in their collection. It really is a classic. It's, it's very tastefully done, it's understated, yet it's, it's an individual choice. The, the, the case fits all kind of different wrists. You know, I, I don't have to go on about it. Anyway, so I'm really excited to have this back. Stay tuned for the, the full video where I'm going to compare this, hopefully the Japanese version. I ordered it a couple of days ago. It's being shipped straight from Japan. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, in the flesh if I can spot any differences. Uh, and also performance-wise. Yeah, maybe it's just a quality control thing. Maybe Seiko is right. I mean, what they've told me basically is that they it's ex done to exactly the same standards and I shouldn't be able to tell any difference. So. Whether that's actually true uh, is yet to, to be seen. Anyway, let's crack on. There's another few things I have to uh, address. Secondly, regarding the, the Squire GMT, the, um, the Pan Am here, I am going to send it back. It's, it's, it's an absolute cracking watch. I absolutely adore it. I, I fully recommend it. However, for me, it just wears a little bit too large. And... I think the excitement of it has got to, a lot to do with, with its newness and, I, I, and I'm used to smaller watches now, this, this being the very largest uh, I can, I can um, get away with but you know because of that cushion case it really wears much smaller but I think this is a little, it, it is pushing it, it's, it's absolutely fantastic, it's a gorgeous watch but I think someone else has deserves it better than me and uh, to, to really appreciate it. So I will be returning that. So lastly, I just want to go over a few kind of a, a lexicon or a glossary or, or however you want to call it for newcomers of the show that might have missed some of these terms and I kind of wanted def to define them for the viewers. So for example, uh, wristwatch check, which I do pretty much most videos is just to check of whatever watch I'm doing. Reverse wristwatch check is when you guys share uh, what wristwatch you're wearing. Another one is Schwarzkopfing, <laughs> uh, which comes from General Schwarzkopf, Storming Norman. Uh, he used to wear, actually, he used to wear a Seiko SKX on one wrist and a Rolex. Uh, I think it was a day date. No, might have been a. I think it was a day date. I, I think it was a present. I can't remember, but he used to wear two watches and. So that I kind of, I refer to that as, as doing the Schwarzkopf or Schwarzkopfing when you have two watches. My favourite combo is an automatic piece and my Rise Man or, or my Mud Man. Because then you can have multiple time zones, this, this, you, you've got a barometer in it. Uh, and it's just something that we watch nerds do. So that's what, whenever I say do, pulling the Schwarzkopf or doing a Schwarzkopf, that is what I mean, it's wearing two watches. Another one is, is pure class. Um, somebody wanted to ask me what exactly I meant by that. Pure class can be anything. An Orient Bambino for $130 can be pure class, as, as so can a super high-end um, Vachon Constantine or whatever. It doesn't have to be really, really expensive. Uh, I mean, I, I think the, the Seiko SKX, for example, is absolute pure class but it's just as pure glass as something super high-end. It's pure glass because it's value for money. It's, it's robust, it's, it's quality, it's accessible to a lot of people. It's a good way of, of getting a, a serious watch for, for, for a very reasonable price. So that is just pure glass. There's no limit to what pure glass is. It's just something I say when I really, really like something. Um, and for example, you know, Robert Redford wearing this in the film. That, now that is pure class, okay? People say on the Instagram, quite love to send me pictures and they say, oh, this is, check out this watch, it's absolute pure class. And they, they, they've got it, they've understood what it means. So it's, I guess it's become a little kind of catchphrase uh, that I use. So I, I, thought, I thought I'd just quickly define that. There's no limitation to, to, to value. It's not associated to value, it's associated um, more to kind of quality and integrity, that kind of thing. So, you know, an SKX can be just as pure class as 
uh, a Rolex Amero. Uh, another thing is that uh, the wild card watch. Now this came from another YouTuber. I forget who exactly coined this phrase, but I really, really liked it. I think every collection at some point should have a wild card watch. Uh, it's something that is a little different. And in fact, this week I'm going to be reviewing a really cool, cool watch that is unlike anything I've ever reviewed on the show so stay tuned for that and it's a definite wildcard watch I guess my wildcard watch would have to be the Squire Heritage it's just it's just an unusual color for me it's not the typical color scheme I go for and that for me is a wildcard watch a rather conservative uh, wildcard watch I must say but wildcard watch nonetheless so I really like that term and I'm always kind of looking out for a, for a newer wildcard watch because actually that, to be honest, that's quite conservative. <laughs> but for me, it's a wildcard watch. It, it really, you know, for example, if you've got a collection and you have, a, you know, a, a Seiko SKX and a Rolex and a G-Shock and maybe a Speedmaster, but then you get, let's say, uh, a System 51 in really bright colours, that could be your wildcard watch. Or let's say, Let's say you have a really super high-end collection and you get something that is completely wacky like that has a tourbillon that is, that is uh, maybe skeletonized or something along, something that is really different, just stands out and is something that it's not your everyday but it's something with a little bit more pizzazz to it. That's the wild card watch. So that, I think that's a really, really cool term for, for watches. Another one is and this came about from my, my time in hospital, is morphine shopping. Morphine shopping, I think we're all kind of guilty of it at some point, is when you, you're, I was, I was in recovery and I was, uh, after surgery and I had, uh, I was full of, I had a morphine uh, drip, <laughs> a morphine IV and I was just, and I was shopping on my phone and I was about to buy True to Black Bay, I think, yeah, and I'm I'm glad I didn't. I mean, I love that watch, but and I ended up getting a different Tudor. But morphine shopping is that state where you should really kind of leave it to the next day and think about it, and you're you make that kind of rash decisions. You're not in a in a in a sober or or, or stable state of mind, and you kind of get on on a kind of a high on on, on shopping. <laughs> So that's morphine shopping. So try and avoid that at all costs. If you've had a, an experience and you and you bought something, where either you were drunk, or you were on some kind of uh, narcotic, or, or narcotic, or you were uh, just in a wrong state of mind, uh, or you were kind of deluded. You know, please share that in the comments. I'd love to hear your morphine shopping experiences if if you've had any. Uh, it's a bit of a rare one, a bit of a very special kind of state uh, and something to be completely avoided, but definitely, definitely happens. Another term that comes up again and again is buyer's remorse or seller's remorse. Currently, I'm suffering seller's remorse of my Oris Aquis. I really, really regret selling it, the 40mm, and I... I just don't know why. Uh, it's got to do with the integrated bracelet. You know, I'm a NATO guy. I must admit, I love my leather straps as well. The bracelets, I do like bracelets, but because it was on rubber, I didn't wear it so much and it just sat in my watch box. So I thought, well, you know, I might as well use that money and put it towards a Tudor or something like that. And now I really, really am regretting it. I found myself over the weekend browsing and looking at Oris Aquises, which is absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, seller's remorse, so that's a good example of seller's remorse. And then buyer's remorse is when you buy something that you really, really shouldn't have, especially if you were morphine shopping, then you get buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse is a bit more rare. I think as watch collectors, we definitely, definitely suffer from seller's remorse all the time. And then, and then you get you, you, you do the, the Jeff Muck rebuy, you do the rebuying thing where you, you've bought the watch. I mean, Seiko SKX is a prime example. I've owned this watch. This is the fourth Seiko SKX 
yeah, fourth Seiko SKX I've owned, and it's a classic rebuy, and it's never going to happen again. I'm never selling uh, the, the SKX. Now, I will sell one of the ones, either I'll choose the Japanese one or this one. We'll see how that goes when I when I jewel them and compare them, if there are any differences. So I will sell one of those, but I am from this moment on, I will have an SKX in my collection. No more selling and buying of the SKX, it's just, nah. It's staying in the collection, so uh, no more seller's remorse and no more uh, buyer's remorse on that, definitely. Well, there's no buyer's remorse, but definitely no seller's remorse ever again on the SKX. Anyway guys, that kind of concludes my terms. If you can think of any other terms to add to this, especially if you're a newcomer to the show, uh, just really kind of break, you know, helps, uh, helps um, you guys understand what the hell I'm talking about. If I'm talking about, I'm pulling a Schwarzkopf or, I'm, or something is pure class or, or uh, the wild card watch or whatever, just, it just helps you guys and, and if you see people that don't understand in the comments just refer to this video. Anyway guys, thank you very very much for watching. Uh, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and I'll definitely catch you in the next one. Okay guys, ciao.